No, well said, bro. Obviously, let's keep it one on one hundred. Mm. You sound that first pro. How, what do you do to enjoy life? Let's yeah, let's right. keep it. What's, <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you did? I can't lie. I feel everyone like be honest. When the first my first pro when I got my first payment. Selfridges. I went to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you know? I went to I went Selfridges. Yeah. I went to Selfridges. But no, it was just me though. I went to Selfridges, took my sister. So I get what I said, what do you want? Yeah, I said, good, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> But then there was a um I used to have a I used to rock an Armani pouch, you know, like yeah, Armani pouch. Yeah, I used to rock that yeah. and I was like, I can't nah, believe not not like, <laughs> So I went I to- I need to upgrade. Oh, yeah, yeah, Armani is 2021, yeah, start, you know? It's starting to riff and <laughs> I, lo- I like Armani, I yeah, like Armani. Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. I'm with Dej. What are you saying to me, brother? I'm good, my bro. You know, another podcast, another youngster. Our episode with Kayon got a lot of good traffic, good feedback. So we've got another Arsenal youngster on the way. So I'm looking forward to chopping it up and for him to tell his story. It's mad because we've had quite a few Arsenal players onto the platform. Seems like we got the magic touch. Yeah, man, got that Guna touch, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Before we introduce our guests, I just want to quickly plug the socials at podcast underscore TBG on Twitter, at pod underscore TBG on Instagram, and at TBG pod on TikTok. Please follow the TikTok, it's blowing up. We're getting millions of views, and obviously, we would like to continue growing. Dej, as we've said p- previously, um, we're trying to build a community, so we want to hear feedback from you guys in the comment in regards to what we can do better, what you want to see, what we can improve on. And obviously, as, as we said previously, we read every single comment and obviously we try to get back to as many as possible. Yeah, that's the key thing. As I was saying to you when we were coming here that we're going to be getting back to every comment. So when we respond, that's either me or Dot. And that's where we want to keep going because we want to build something here. We've got a lot of great content planned so, like, stay with us and we appreciate your support. No, definitely. It's actually mad because I always say Dej, but we've got another Dej in the house. <laughs> 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 We're delighted to announce that we are joined in the studio with Nathan Butler. Oh, yeah, Deji. Welcome, welcome, bro. <laughs> Two Dejis in the house. Welcome, my bro. You pronounce my name right. Come on, so. man. Yeah, I'm Niger. Nice, nice, I'm on. the first show. I got, can't can't disgrace exactly, myself. Exactly. I got Ben exactly. Nigerians watching, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. Uh, no yeah. worries, man. We've been speaking for a bit. Yeah. So probably, we appreciate yeah. you like coming down and showing your support, man. Because mm-hmm. I know it's a long travel, especially at this rush hour time. Yeah, traffic's mad in London, so... But I made time to come speak mm. to you guys. I like what you're doing. No, I love, love. And we love what you're doing as well, bro. So to kick things off, who is Nathan Butler or your Deji? In terms of what? In terms of football? Just life. Being? Where, where did you grow up? Let's, let's, let's start I, from there. I'll make it easy uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in East London, Walthamstow. That's where I was born and bred. Um, yeah, that's where I um, learned life lessons where I learned how to play football. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's where I call home. Mm, so how was your upbringing? Because, like, when we speak to a lot of ballers, mm. they say it was the cage culture, it yeah. was out there on the streets. Um, me, there's not really a lot of, um, you know, like the South London ballers, they have the uh, concrete cages. We don't <laughs> really have a lot of concrete cages. But I was just really, like, at school, we had a concrete cage. That's where I, <laughs> done yeah, that's where I done my thing. Um, <laughs> But I used to just go to the park and like when I'm from young, just joining with like random people in the park when I was m- mad young, where you had to put like two shopping bags as the goal. Yeah, like two the jackets trees. and stuff. Yeah, bags. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> School and bags. when like, someone shoots high, you'd be saying, that's over, yeah. that's <laughs> over. And you're like trying to measure yeah. it, yeah. So that's where, I, that's where I really had fun and like I learned some of, some of my um, skills that I even use today, so yeah. No, nah, that's dope. So obviously you're kicking ball on the ends. Mm. When do you realise or when does your family realise that you've actually got something? 
my, well, my dad always thought I had something. And to be honest, like even from when I was young, I knew that I was quite good at football. But I'll say maybe I was like six or seven. Um, my dad didn't let me play for any um, Sunday league team. What, church? No, he just didn't. Oh. He just didn't um, <laughs> let me play for any Sunday league. So I, um, what happened was I used to go to goals, you know, goals. Yeah, yeah. So I used to just do some training there. And then from there, um, I got scouted from to Leighton Orient from there. And so that's where it all kind of started to me, like age six or seven. Okay, so what did you actually sign? Like, no, form- I didn't sign formally for Leighton Orient. I was just trained with them. Then in a matter of a few sessions, I was um, scouted from Leighton Orient to Arsenal. So, yeah. Gee, so what? So a scout from Arsenal picked you up from Leighton Orient? Yeah, yeah. From, I didn't play a game for Leighton Orient, but I was just training with them for like maybe... From what I can't, I can't even remember, but I just remember training with Leighton Orient. Yeah, that's okay, where that's I interesting because normally you have to yeah. get signed and maybe Leighton yeah. Orient. No, it was just like I think there was someone, you know, but I think someone was working. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually mad because I want to go back to your dad yeah. in terms of not allowing you to, yeah, like join a Sunday league team. Was there a particular reason? He just, he just wouldn't let me. Like I really wanted to mm. play. I used to see. Just get really angry seeing like when you're in school, primary school, the boy, like your friends saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna play football, playing this team, this team," and dad just wouldn't let me say like I'll get injured and stuff like mm. that, like that. You know, half parent yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> with the superstitions yeah, and superstition, that. So I just had to respect. Obviously, he's my father, so I had to res- at the time I was under age, so I had to respect his wishes. So yeah. So you said you joined Arsenal, which yeah. is obviously like a big club. So yeah. like, how did you approach that, like psychologically? Because no mm. disrespect to Leighton Orient, yeah. Leighton Orient and Arsenal yeah. is two different sort of conversations. Yeah, because um, uh, where I live, I used to drive past Halen all the time because I live two minutes away from Halen. And one time, my dad, I was driving with him, and he said, "You're gonna be there one day," and that resonated with me for for a while. So when I actually got there, I was starstruck. Like I walked in the dome. And you know when you're like six or seven, like you see all these other kids, and then you look inside yourself and ask yourself if you're good enough. But like through when I started training more, I thought like, yeah, I think I belong here. So obviously you're driving past um, Hayland yeah. consistently, and obviously you're getting starstruck, thinking, listen, I want to be there one day. So what age was this? This was like um, seven, eight, six to eight between them ages. Yeah, I see. Um, Passing by, I used to be like, "What's that, Dad?" He would tell me, he would tell me like, what it is, and obviously, Halen was look very different to what it is now. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was starstruck. Yeah. Mm. So you get into Arsenal, mm. like, what's the period of you like training with them, and yeah. before they say, you know what, we want to sign your name. It was a weird because um, obviously back then, when you're like six to eight, you don't have to sign for a club straight away. So um, I was really, I was at Arsenal, but then I got invited to go train with Chelsea for a bit. And then, but it was in um, Cobham training ground. That's where it is. And it's kind of far from where my mum lives at the time, in Walthamstow. So um, we, ha- we came to a decision where we had to choose between Cobham and uh, with Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, and obviously, because I'm an Arsenal sport as well, I, had to, <laughs> yeah. I chose Arsenal. So, yeah. That's yeah. that's actually mad because I yeah. think Kayon, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he was, there, he was yeah. okay. Even so did Eddie, you, even Eddie, Eddie yeah. as well. So did you know Kayon at that no, time as Ke- well? No, Kayon's like a um, family friend of mine, so I've been knowing Kayon my whole life. Oh, okay. So, okay. but yeah, it was, like it was. I remember the Chelsea. I used to have the primary school finish primary school straight away, and then I'll take uh, my mum will drop me to um, drop me to the station, but I'll have, still be in my school clothes. And I go into McDonald's, have to change in the toilet of McDonald's and get on the train. And it was, yeah, it was just crazy. So That's what I'm saying. Yeah, People don't yeah. see this yeah. this grind yeah. from, from day dot to yeah. make it as a professional exactly. footballer. So from then, um, yeah, I, I had to make a choice. Um, and I, I chose Arsenal. I think it was the right decision for me. Yeah, definitely, because you're, you're doing your thing yeah, now. Yeah. So like, talk to us about your progression through the ranks. So you're under seven, under mm. eight. Are you dominating it or was there a year where mm, it was a bit tricky where you could have got released? Like, talk to us about Um, that journey from under eights to let's say under 16s. Um, I'd say like the under nines to about under 11s, I was doing really well. I was, um, I was started off as a striker. So I was playing well. I was um, having fun. Um, I think the year that maybe struggled was with like, was under 12s. 
because um i don't know like obviously you're growing your body's starting to develop other boys are developing faster and at that age it's really like some boys are about this small some big <laughs> you know what i mean so it can make them look better than what they are so um yeah under 12 i think i struggled i really i didn't think i was gonna get i wouldn't say i'll get released but I, I like i wasn't starting a lot i was having a bit of not self-doubt because i'm always confident but i started you know your mind mm. subconsciously start thinking am i good enough like why does this not this coach doesn't uh, rate me but um yeah just the under 12 season was really a hard season for me but then um all the other seasons were good yeah to be honest because mm, i asked that because as i said a lot of academy mm. boys watch this and they're going yeah. through their own journey where yeah. they might not be starting or things not be yeah. going their way so like what would your advice be to people that are going through that rough patch where they're like questioning themselves yeah. and like have i got it the gaffer don't like yeah. all that kind of stuff yeah especially with me because um over my time in hayland i had a lot of injuries i um i broke my leg i broke my leg in malaysia on tour um i um broke one of my toes so and it was you know the crunch time when you're gonna get a scholar or not so i'll get back i'll do my thing then get injured again so my advice to um for young people like that is like obviously i'm faithful i'm i believe in god but even if you don't i think you should just always have self-confidence and talk to people i know even when i was young i was quite shy but like it's not good to hold all your emotions within like it's just it's not beneficial you have to talk if that's your parent even a coach someone that so you can who, confide into so who's your like safe haven like who would you confide in if like something's happening like or? if something's like if i don't i won't tell my mom because she would just worry so, <laughs> like, or yeah she will go so i'll probably my sister my sister she will she um she's very helpful for help in my life and i'm faithful for her no big up so obviously you overcome that adversity mm. at 12 13 mm. Mm. so what happens next um 12 13 so that's when i was um questioning myself i wasn't getting injured them times 12 13 so then on the 14s i'm starting to pick up i'm playing on the wing now like um my growing pains are still going through it but i'm starting to get through it um i'm playing well under 15s i was playing up with under 14s under 15s them times um then got to the under 16 season and on the 15 season, this is when I broke my leg in Malaysia and we had a tour in Malaysia. Uh, just a um, bad, really bad tackle from the guy. Broke my leg, had to get flown in, thrown back to London. It was just a big, I had to have surgery out there and come back to London. Well, so how was that process? Because yeah. you, you say that yeah, like, it's, like it's normal, it's normal yeah. but that's, especially at that young tender yeah. age, you hear about pros getting ACLs yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah. Like how were the club with you? Like what, what sort of happened? Uh, they were perfect. Um, at the time, um, we had just um per had just came in as the academy academy manager then i was on my hospital bed and i got a message and i was like who's texting my phone and i see the profile picture and it's per motorcycle and obviously as a youngster um i don't think he would even know who i am so that kind of gesture they flew my dad out straight to malaysia from london to come and check on me because i was in a really bad way so they were very good with me yeah a big up Arsenal yeah. and that's not the first time mm. I've sort of heard about yeah. their sort of positive aftercare mm. so. very very good aftercare yeah. and how long how long did that set you back <sighs> for I was out for 10 months because um yeah I was out for 10 months because the the when I in Malaysia I had to go to like the top top um Surgeons. surgeon to so it, but lucky he done a very good job so um so it took me 10 months and maybe like two months to get sharp so yeah about a year I'd say wow, so like throughout that whole experience mm. like what's one thing you learned about yourself I remember like um, when it happened because I remember I was having a good tournament as well mm. and I was just I banging was in the goals banging yeah. in the goals and like yeah exactly and then like when my mum found out the news and she was really upset you know how um, they get a bit emotional yeah, mothers yeah, yeah. Um, so it didn't really make me, make me feel good I felt it w I know it wasn't my fault but I felt like I, I was letting everyone down but what I learned about myself is that I'm resilient and that I can really um, overcome any everything or anything that comes to me when I got through it so anything in the future that had come my way I would use that to draw back to that and give me strength so yeah so obviously you make a full recovery yeah. um 
what again what yeah. happens after, after that, that. <laughs> so, like, <yeah. laughs> you guys yeah. are saying the same yeah. question so, so um <laughs> after that so on the 15 season um that was on the 15 season come back on the 16 season so this is time when you're going to get your scholar or not so do you have like a sort of inkling at this at this sort no, of this time is, so or? this is the start of the season okay but i'm i'm like um with through that club they know that i'm a, uh, obviously a quality player um, so f- um, from the start of that season, I'm playing well, scoring goals. I remember I scored a hat trick against Tottenham. Oh, that must yeah. have gone down well, man. Yeah, it really went down well. <laughs> it went down. That's one of my favorite um, hat tricks. Um, yeah, it was. Oh, good. just just the no, way. Sorry, I, no, sorry. No, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. You got hat tricks for fun. Then I got um, in training. Um, uh, one of these defenders, he stepped on my um, foot and I um, fractured my metatarsal. So I had to have another surgery. I had to have a put a pin inside my metatarsal and I was in a boot for three months. So then I come back, I come back about February this time. But and I've, I'm thinking, oh, have I done enough to get a scholar? Like people are having their meetings, you know, uh, everyone is getting a bit turbulent. But then I played, we played the uh, Liam Brady Cup and I play really well in it, and then um, when it time to decisions, I I got my scholar, so I was happy. So yeah. was there that sort of anxious wait yeah. that you hear players talk mm. about? Oh, this player's been called. He's got his scholar. They've got their scholar. Mm. I've not been called yet. Am I getting? Yeah, it's, it's exactly like that in the change room. Everyone will be like, "Yeah, have you have you have your meeting? Have you got a text? All of that kind of stuff." So as if you haven't got that, you'll think, "Well, oh, what's going on?" Am I you start questioning yourself? Mm. But yeah, luckily for me, I. I uh, got through. So, mm. no, I um, So, like, in terms of your scholar, at yeah. that age, is that's when you kind of move into digs? Um, when did I move into digs? Sorry. Um, yeah, when I got my scholar, I had to move into digs. I remember I was... I did not want to move into digs. Mom, I want to just stay with my mom. Your mommy. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell. But my mom was like... Because, obviously, it's too far. I wasn't driving at the time. Obviously, you don't have a lot of money to go like cab back and forth, so I had to go into digs. So yeah. So how is that experience? Because you had differing sort yeah. of opinions or not opinions, views. Mm. Some people they get put with families yeah. and the club sort of monitor them. Yeah. And they sort of say, "Oh, are you gelling with this family?" If they're yeah. not, they say, "You know, we're gonna put you with another family." So how how is your situation? No, my digs was uh, it was a very uh, elderly couple. They were very lovely. Um, they were retired. Um, but when I first came, I don't really like dogs. But they had oh, a dog. Yeah. But over the time, I learned to um, like it. So isn't um, there like a checklist that's saying, okay, likes pets or yeah, likes... Yeah, but I think when it starts all getting, I think you just have to like... Like, the people were... There were um, there's not a really a checklist. It's more like... Um, I don't know. I think you just see... And if you don't really don't like it, you can go to someone else. So, yeah. So take us through that process of actually mm. signing that scholar because it yeah. must have been like a proud moment for your you and your family. Yeah, it was a very proud moment. Um, I think um, my mum got an email saying they have to have a meeting with um, Per and another staff member and Luke Hobbs um, to talk about whatever, what's going on in the future. So uh, my dad, my mum came and we had a meeting and then I was, I didn't know which way it was going to go. But I was... I would say I was like 60, 40, you know, Ooh, 65. That's close, yeah, it's yeah. close. Um, but my dad was always confident I was going to get it. But as he was read, as Per was saying, um, we've taken this, I'm thinking in my head, oh, is he going to say, yeah, like I, then he's, as soon as he said, we're going to um, re- uh, not retain, get a scholar for another two years, I was delighted over the moon. My mom was smiling. I mean, it was a very good feeling, man, something I won't forget. So what role does Per play in the academy? Because mm. Kayon came on the pod mm. as well, said when he had his injury, yeah. he received a message. Yeah. It seems like he's that sort of figure that the young players sort of look at in terms of like coaching, guidance, yeah. advice. Obviously, um, he's played at the top level. He's won the uh, the World Cup. He knows what it, what it takes to get it done. So uh, um, his advice is like gold dust. So, and he's such a very nice guy. He'll take you under the wing. Even like him as a centre back, he'll tell me stuff that he didn't like as a centre back that other strikers did. So little tips that can give me an advantage. So he's just a very nice guy and someone that I learn off daily and so positive. 
and do you mind sharing a bit of insight into what, what he's told you as a striker what you need to do uh, Per didn't like pace <laughs> <laughs> I mean okay. he was the head of the game <laughs> he was the head of the game yeah, he didn't need pace yeah <laughs> true he was very intelligent but he did say yeah he did say he didn't like pace oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it yeah. <laughs> cool so obviously you signed that scholar how old are you at the time 16 16 mm. so you signed the scholar you're at Arsenal yeah you're feeling like Oof, I'm doing something I'm up to something here mm. what are your friends saying well like friends back in there yeah, ends. yeah they're like um, wow well, Nath like they're, they're bigging me up like I was popular in school like obviously if you're academy footballer in school you get rated, you get rated but <laughs> especially I was, Arsenal as yeah. well that badge carries so much like clout <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> but like um, like from like I was like popular in the school but when I signed the scholar like I think I, in the area I became more popular like everyone kind of not knew about me but mm, was so, proud of me mm, so how did you like sort of manage that that situation because obviously you're going back to the ends yeah you know how it is when you're 16 mm. chicken and chips yeah. <laughs> all of that kind of yeah, stuff yeah yeah, yeah yeah let's roll here let's mm. go cinema let's yeah. link these things you know how it is <laughs> isn't it but obviously yeah. you've got a football career exactly. that you're pursuing exactly. so how did you manage that dynamic um obviously there was always temptation um I just had to like whenever um like we was lingering and stuff. I I've got my my best friend um C J Clark. He was um big like me and him kind of followed each other. So like when other people were doing like um not like in trouble but like doing things maybe they shouldn't be doing. We'll just doing go, things that kids kids do, do yeah, of course yeah. yeah. Um we'll just go um train at um like a astro and stuff like to get better and stuff like that. So it was good. I think that would kept me on the straight and narrow. Obviously, there's so for uh, young people in general, there's so many obstacles and not obstacles, distractions. If you want to pursue something, so having someone that you can do that with helps you because it feels like it has camar. What's it called? Camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, feels like you don't have to do it by yourself. So, yeah. Wow, you're really blowing grammars for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like you go past the obstacles yeah. the trials and temptations mm. so now you're 17 18 mm. talk to us what's your situation are you playing up have you trained with the first team yeah i trained i trained una emery was the manager i remember i trained with um the first team no first of all we don't train with the first team. we don't it was under 18 versus the first team that was the first time then on another occasion, I went there by myself. So what happened in that game? Do you remember? I remember um, I was so, I was like, obviously as a youngster, I've just used to seeing these guys on TV. So when I see them up close, I think the likes of like, Aubameyang, Ozil was there at the time, Torreira. I was like, wow, starstruck. But when I got on the pitch, I think I'd done an action. I'd done an action against someone and I thought like, okay, I can hold my own. So then I started playing to the best of my ability so yeah it was good so obviously you're, you're training with the first team you're progressing through the ranks mm. and correct me if i'm wrong i think 2021 when yeah. you're 18 yeah you signed your first pro contract yes yes yeah um, how before you go into it mm. how was that different to the scholar contract in terms of the feeling the feeling um it was something like I just like words can't explain how I felt. It was really big. It was like, obviously, I, I could actually say I'm a professional footballer for Arsenal Football Club. Like just to say that sentence alone was the um, biggest, uh, biggest attraction. Um, I felt like I had accomplished something. Like I felt like I accomplished something as a scholar. But this like put the nail on the head. Like wow, maybe I actually actually have a true talent. You know, so yeah. Mm, so what did Dad say as well? Because he drove past. Yeah, the training ground. And he said you're gonna yeah. be there one day. So like, how 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 did he react? Yeah, he was um, he's kind of calm. He's a calm guy, you know. He keeps me on the straight and narrow. But he was even he knew, like he's so proud of me. Um, so that yeah, it really made me feel good. I really felt good about myself. So when you get that pro contract, mm. what changes because. You see it in professional football. Mm. Some people it can change for the worst. Maybe yeah. I know I've got this pro. I can rest on my laurels. Mm. But I speak to a lot of young players, and they say signing that pro means the journey yeah. starts now. Exactly, exactly. The journey starts now. Obviously, um, from scholar to pro, you get more money. There's other stuff that comes into play. Um, but obviously, a coach or coach of mine always used to say, 
like it's not the first your first pro contract it, i mean it's not it's the easiest one you get it's if you get on the second the third the fourth so that really stuck in my head like because there's been a lot of players with the talent low abundance of talent and once they sign their like a big contract or even the first pro like they let it get to their head and stop doing the stuff that was doing that got them in that situation in the first place and they need to fade out so that that really um deterred me because i've seen a lot of players like that like mm. i know a lot of players like that so i didn't really want to be like that and i don't want to be like that so yeah no well said bro obviously let's keep it one on 100 mm. you signed that first pro <laughs> How, what do you do to enjoy life let's yeah. let's keep it real. What's, <laughs> what's, what's the first thing you did i can't lie i feel like i'm gonna be honest when the first my first pro when i got my first payment I went to yeah. I went Selfridges. Yeah. I went Selfridges, but no, it was just me though. I went Selfridges, took my sister. I said, "Get." I said, "What do you want?" Yeah, I said, "Get yeah, 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 yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> But then there was a um. I used to have a. I used to rock an Armani pouch, you know, like yeah, Armani yeah, pouch. I used to rock that, yeah. and I was like, oh, nah, I can't this is not <laughs> So I went I to, need to upgrade. Yeah, yeah, Armani is two thousand and twenty-one. Yeah, you know, starting to riff and uh, I, lo- I like Armani. I like yeah. Armani. So I went to um. I went. That's when Goyard was starting to get in in yeah, fashion. Yeah, yeah. So I went over there and I got one a bag. So yeah, that's what I spent my first. Oh, no, no, that's dope. Yeah. Oh, that's sick, man. I love to hear those stories. Yeah. So like, in terms of signing that pro, mm. so are you training with the first team? What's the plan? Because normally you hear a lot of players say, mm. "Okay, I sign my pro." Yeah. The club approached me and said, "You know what? We're gonna put you for a year or two in yeah. under twenty threes. Yeah. Then we're gonna maybe loan you out, or yeah. we're gonna see how you're progressing. Then maybe chuck you into the first team." Was there any sort of that kind of plan? So, um, from the under eighteen season, so I was a first year scholar. I was doing really well. Then I got injured again um, for like nine months. I done I um, done cartilage in my knee, mm-hmm. but then I come back as a second year scholar now. Um, so that's why I received my pro kind of late. So I received as I turned 18. So you can receive your pro, the, like earliest you can receive your pro is 17. I got it like at the back end of my second year scholar. So I received it quite late. So I was, I was um, playing under 18s, sometimes with the 21s, but 21s were quite strong at the time. And I was just coming back from injury, so yeah. Okay, so he was in the 21s at that time in the forward positions? Kido was doing really well. He was my age, but he was doing really well. He's yeah, he's my, a good friend of mine. He was top, he's yeah. top guy. Um, Flo Balagun, he's just top. Um, um, then he had like Saliba coming. He just came, I think. He was playing a little bit. Um, like Jordan McNeff. Um, who else is that? Miguel Aziz was playing. Um, Trey Coyle, oh, yeah, yeah. like said that top player. So Saliba was there at the time. He was um, when he came. He had to play with twenty ones for a little bit, but um, obviously his quality is too much for. Yeah, so <laughs> at that stage, yeah. like, what was he doing that made you say like this guy? He's gonna just be- so calm on the ball and he's just. Um, a unit. <laughs> he's a unit. Just to call it bluntly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a unit, he's, but he's quality on the ball as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. No, he's a, he's one of the best centre backs in the Premier League <laughs> yeah. now, man. He's a top player. So, talk to us about the season that's just went. Okay. Um. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, um, I didn't enjoy it as not last season, two seasons ago as much. I wasn't really playing in twenty ones. Um, the the manager favored not favored was playing other people ahead of me. Um, so I had a really tough year two seasons ago. Wasn't really doing much. Then I think last season when I burst onto the scene, really into, mm. not burst onto the scene, but I got more traction. You know, yeah. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Because mm, I know you went to Accrington, yeah, Stanley on loan, yeah. and obviously there's a famous manager there, John Coleman. Yeah, yeah. He's like one of the <laughs> legends of the the lower leagues and stuff yeah. like that. So, how was that transition from like? You know the smooth pitches on mm, Coney. Yeah. You know the comfortable settings, the training kit in the yeah. changing room, to like going up north because you're yeah. moving away from ends totally yeah, now. So yeah. how is that transition? It's like going from a boy to a man, really. Like nothing's done for you. You got to, whatever you need to do, you have to do it yourself. Um, but it's good. I'm really glad that I went there. I enjoyed my time, even though things didn't really go as well as out. Um, for the team even and, and for me as I wanted to but 
like they're it's a great club there and it's really family fan club so it was good yeah so like delve into your time i know you yeah. said it didn't really mm. go too well and at arsenal yeah we know from top to bottom yeah there's a certain brand of football that yeah. needs to be played yeah, yeah. quick touches passing whereas when you go to like a team mm. like accrington stanley i know you were playing as like one of the three behind yeah, the striker, striker. Yeah, yeah. so winning the flick on, mm. so it's it's long ball, it's yeah, hoofy, it's, yeah. and <laughs> Nathan Chase yeah, channels. Yeah, run. Yeah. So how is that whole philosophy changed for you? Obviously, I signed on deadline day because I had a lot. It was a lot of clubs after me. Oh, so of, which like clubs were, were interested? A lot of um, League One clubs, League Two clubs. Um, yeah, okay. a lot of them. Um, but um, on deadline day, and I decided to sign with um, Accrington. Um, so I've gone there, and I think I've ride on. I ride, I've trained on Thursday, and I've thrown straight in on Saturday um, against Lincoln. And I'm playing, I was playing up front in a two. And I remember like five minutes in, I'm like, oh my days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my days. This is very different. Obviously, yeah. it's very different. But um, yeah. The, it's like if you don't experience it because there's so many different styles of playing of winning a football match there's so many different as long as you win the football match who who really matters how you play um but yeah it was it was a good experience i I enjoyed it for earlier so in terms of you know living out in Um, we live in manchester or what happened was i was in a um i was in a hotel for quite a while for like maybe one month in blackburn it's in blackburn for one month but then they sorted me out uh, a place in Manchester, which was fine. Yeah. Okay, because Manchester's like the new London. It's yeah, yeah. Older, yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's great. Weird. Obviously, me and Dot have enjoyed. Yeah, we enjoy Manchester. We enjoy Manchester. So, what made you come to the decision to actually go to Accrington? Because you said obviously yeah, you were being chased by several clubs. I was thinking I just like obviously with Arsenal twenty ones be playing the Papa John's. Um, I done really well in that, and I had a good. Um, I played really well. I was starting to train with the first team a lot. Went to Dubai with them on the winter break, oh. um, which was good. And um, like the manager was starting to talk to me, give me tips. I felt like I was growing as a player. So I thought like maybe I need to test myself in the men's game, you know. So I had different clubs after me. Some I was supposed to, some deals I was supposed to have go, but it broke down at the last minute. So then Accrington came in, and I. I thought, what would I do? Just play, keep playing twenty ones, or try and challenge myself in mm. League One. So that's what I did. So how is that sort of first visit into the changing room at Accrington, where you're your boy, yeah, and there's men, you know, thirty five years mm. of age. <laughs> if we don't stay up, I can't pay my mortgage. Yeah, is that, kind is of that thing. Like, so yeah. like, how is that dynamic for you? Like, it's like um, eye opener. It's like. I remember coach always used to say that we're in a bubble in us, but when you're young, you just feel like, <laughs> yeah, like you actually are in a bubble. People like um, clubs like um, Accrington, like you have to fight three points are so valuable, even though we play for three points and 21s, but people livelihoods are at stake. So um, yeah, it was very different. But as soon as I walked in the dressing room, I shook everyone's hand. Um, yeah, and then just go on with it, isn't it? Yeah. What says so their banter like something like this ain't Arsenal lads. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think, I think, as soon as I come in, um, I think someone said in a Scouse accent, he was like, it was like, so why? He uh, said, why are you here then? He said, uh, and he said, um, I said, did your agent tell you about Accrington? That's what he said. But um, <laughs> um, I was like, um, I had just had to say I just laughed it off. Because <laughs> 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 they talk very fast up there as well. I had to get used, get to, used to the accent because there's because Accrington is there's a lot of um, people uh, Scouse accents. Some people from Manchester. So yeah. So obviously your loan comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the conversation with Arsenal? Um, so we just reviewed the loan, how it went. Obviously. Um, talk about plans moving forward to this season so um yeah just talking about um what i did good what i could do improve on like showing me videos and stuff like that how that how did i find it what would i do better how could they help me more you know what i mean so yeah like a um evaluation 
Mm, we're gonna come back to what's gonna happen in the future, mm, but okay. I wanna circle back to yeah. Dubai. Oh, you know, Dubai, yeah. Yeah, the first team. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I saw there was a game where you came on where yeah. there was like maybe 10 youngsters yes, that yes. got substituted and you were one of them. Yeah. So how was that experience with the bonding trip? Yeah, it was good. Um, it was good. It was when the World Cup was going on. So there was still some first team players still there. It was good. I had fun. Um, training was intense. Like when you train with the first team, you feel like your level goes up because you don't have, maybe in 21s you have time to like try to, twist up a man like <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but here you have to do your action fast and mm-hmm. make sure everything's precise and yeah it was good um i played i played against ac milan and leon yeah yeah, yeah i remember I saw ac the... milan and leon it was good um yeah it was very good so, so which like first team players took you under their wing and like was sort of like a mentor on that trip what in dubai yeah um eddie and reese they yeah. took me under yeah eddie and reese they're good yeah they were good with yeah. me they yeah. got reese as well just signed his new contract yeah, today yeah, as well yeah. so they yeah. got reese yeah so what sort of information did they give you is it more so just like following their lead or they're like oh you know what? when you're in this position do this yeah or? obviously because eddie like sometimes i play nine as well he tells me like he's so sharp in the box like so i just try and pick up little tips here and there and he tells me like he can see what i'm good at as well so when, he, when i do something good it's like yeah well done like continue doing this and with reese the same i can play wide as well so they're both top top players and they come from the youth so they clearly have the quality and the mentality to get to where i'm going so just trying to draw the information like a sponge <laughs> it's actually mad because obviously when we had k on on i yeah. was asking him about using those kind of guys as mm. inspiration because yeah. obviously they're from ends yeah. they're mandem mm. you get what i mean they've yeah, gone yeah. through the ground and yeah. now they're bona fide premier yeah. league and international footballers yeah. kind of thing yeah so like when you see players like that so the eddies the yeah. bakayo sakas who mm. i think is one of the best players in the premier league yeah. the reese nelson's the mls yeah what does that do for you internally shows me like even like if you're not things are not going your way obviously there is a there's there is a pathway at the club that's what shows me if you're good enough you'll get you will get opportunities which is showing because i was um i got an opportunity to be on the bench a couple times with the first team which was very good for me so it just makes me go harder you know it's mm-hmm. not nothing's impossible so yeah mm. so we spoke about the youngsters that have made it into the first mm. team I want to talk about the youngsters just beneath because mm. there's two names when I speak to all my contacts that mm. keep popping up. And that's Miles Lewis Kelly oh, yeah. and Ethan, yeah, who yeah, just signed yeah. a new contract as yeah. well. So talk to me about them because they're people that, obviously they're just getting into that mm. sort of mainstream spotlight now. Yeah. What's their abilities like and do you see them cutting at the top? Yeah, they're really top, top players for like, they're like 15, 16, if I'm not mistaken, 17, I think. Mm. They came on the Dubai trip with the first team when I came there and like I was talking to them and they're top quality for their age. They can they can not they're not even punching, like mm. they're they're swimming with the big sharks. Mm. They're very good. Um obviously they still have things to learn like us all. Um, but they've got um, Ethan, Miles, top players. No, definitely. When we speak to our contacts, that's all we hear in the <laughs> Arsenal Academy. Yeah. Those two, they're, <laughs> they're going to go far. Mm. So obviously, fast forwarding back yeah. to where we got to mm. in regards to the upcoming season, yeah. what's the plan? Um, I've been going to sit down, maybe possibly another a loan, a season-long loan to really establish getting first-team football, um, prove myself in there and go from there really. So, in terms of standard, are you talking League One? Are you talking um, League Two, or even abroad? Because you yeah, see a lot of youngsters yeah. go abroad. What's um, um, yeah, I don't really mind League One, League Two. I'll be, I'm open to abroad as well. Well, not too far, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, in all seriousness, yeah, I'll be open to abroad as well. Yeah. So you said there was like um. Uh, not a risk analysis but there was like a strength weaknesses yeah. what could we do better mm. so from your time at Accrington mm. what's something where you thought mm, you know what I can improve on that next low move that's mm. going to get ironed out um, if I ever went back to a club uh, that played the style like Accrington like you like um, when I was playing I was playing like as a 10 at Accrington mm. so I'll just they'll play up to the front man and they'll flick on so I'll just be running and running and then the one time I don't run, 
that's why he flicks mm-hmm. it on to me. So I just mm-hmm. thought, like, from like in the future, if I ever have go to or team plays like in the game or something, I have to go for every one. Mm-hmm. Um, what else would I? Um, uh, Got to be um, ruthless. Chances are limited. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think those two. So in terms of the loan, because you said sort of like the style of play was a bit yeah. of a culture shock. Mm. But before that move sort of decided, mm. with the list of clubs that were interested, yeah. don't you sort of say, or oh, doesn't your agent, should yeah. I say, sort of say, oh, you know what, this plays this style of brand of yeah. football, this club plays similar yeah. to Arsenal, yeah. let's try that. Was there that sort yeah, of... Yeah, there was that conversation. And as I mentioned before, I had a, um, a, a loan move with another club, but that broke down. Mm. And, and then I had came to a choice that was on the deadline. There was like two or three clubs. But at the time, Accrington came in and I thought like, well, okay, should I stay and play 21s and, or go to Accrington, Stanley? So I thought like, let me go play Accrington. Then as I, I've signed um, the loan agreement, then one of the other clubs have come back saying, Wait, why, why did you sign? We really yeah. want you. So I've called the um, the person in that works at Arsenal saying, um, what should I do? There's thing, but I already had given my word to Accrington. So I, 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 your words, your word. Words, no, that's, words classy. that's classy, that's yeah. classy. No, definitely. So. In regards to obviously potentially going out on loan this mm. season, have you spoken to the club about that yet? Um, yeah, yeah, we've spoken to the club, um, but I still need to um, speak to them to iron a few things out. So yeah, yeah. So in terms of like pre-season now, yeah. obviously when you're walking in, you're walking a bit gingerly, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. That yo-yo test, isn't no, it? It's not even a yo-yo anymore. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's the one K. That's the new killer. Okay, <laughs> the new killer. Yeah. Me. Everyone just on the floor. Right, yeah. literally everyone on the floor. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just so hard, but it's worth it. It's worth it. When fo- uh, when people say being a footballer is easy, <laughs> that's what that's what you can use to counter that. <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one. And in terms of physically, obviously you've yeah. had a lot of injuries. Yeah. How, how are you feeling, bro? Man? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You're, you're a warrior, bro. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I've put my, I think I've, uh, well, touch wood, I've put my injury, um, uh, injury history behind me. Um, I haven't been injured in two, three years. I feel like in good condition. Obviously, I'm um, I'm a very fast player, one of the fastest at the club. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm very good, good condition. So in terms of Arteta, I know you said you've had some dialogue yeah. with him. So like, what what's he sort of said to you like recently or on the trip to yeah. Dubai? Yeah, in Dubai he was like, um, I was playing striker in Dubai. Um, he's just giving me tips of like, it's um, the way we, the way we play is very complicated, like so many manoeuvres. But they when you when you um, they come off, they come off. Um, so he was telling me it's all about timing, when to show for the boys and then and obviously because I've got uh, a lot of speed like um doing double movement so like say i'm with a defender bringing him in yeah. then spinning yeah. and they're not no one's gonna really live with me when i do that so he was giving me tips like that and he's just he's a he's a genius so in terms of current arsenal obviously they've been making yeah. headlines splashing money yeah declan rice Havertz, timber mm-hmm. talk about lavia yeah loads of new signings trying to push for that league like as a fan like what what do you make of all the activity um, as a fan, yeah, it's good. It's great. Um, I want to see the club do as well as it can. Obviously, um, when I left on loan, we was um, at the top of the league, and I was watching when I was at Accrington, and I thought we was gonna do it, but um, I see it just proved to be a bit more, just a, just a bit more had the day. Kept their composure. Yeah, obviously, I know you can't say, it, yeah. but yeah, obviously that experience kind of yeah. told during the home stretch. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Obviously, as Dez said, Arsenal have been splashing the cash. In terms of Declan Rice, for me, I'd say probably the best defensive midfielder in the Premier League with mm-hmm. Rodri. In my opinion, it's not a fact, it's my opinion. Yeah. How, how do you feel about him? Um, uh, I think he's a top player for West Ham. And obviously, you now he's coming to Arsenal. Um, yeah, I think he has a lot of quality and I think he'll add to the team. I think he's a top young player and he'll he'll grow into something um, even greater at Arsenal. So, yeah. Mm, because, like, I think I've seen it to another young player that mm. when your team's doing well, obviously you're a fan, you want them yeah. to do well, but that means the barrier to entry yeah. for a younger player gets higher and higher because they're mm. spending cash on, on the best in class. Yeah. So, like, 
What's your mindset towards that? Um, it just when stuff like that happens, it's just you gotta push yourself to be even better. Like you know, you gotta strive to, you know, break them barriers that you're talking about. Um, um, it's all about competition that day. It's a dog eat dog world, so you gotta you know fight for your place. You know, nothing's gonna be given to you. That's exactly what I learned on loan. Nothing's gonna be given. <laughs> Yeah. So we're gonna move into life outside of football, my bro. Okay. What What do you get up to? Um, I really just be. I play FIFA a lot. I'm really the best at FIFA. This is what you're everyone the best. Says. Yeah. This is what everyone yeah. says <laughs> on the camera. Then when you start playing, <laughs> all right, all right. um, but FIFA, um, um, like to relax. I go out with my friends. Maybe go out to a restaurant or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's about it. Well, I may find that bag of tow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I haven't, I haven't even been bag of tow. I like, um, like if I want to go out to like one of those restaurants, I like uh, Novakov. Like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It slaps, it slaps. Yeah, it slaps still. Okay, and in terms of like music, what are you rocking with? Um, I like, I'm a piano now. Serious? Yeah. What, can you go to one of those? No, nah, I can't go to them functions. <laughs> like. Have you heard of Danky Sounds? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I can't go to that. But I like the music. Um, UK. Um, I like Central Sea. Yeah, he's doing uh, his thing right now with Dave. Yeah, yeah, Dave. Uh, American music. I like um. Uh, little baby. Yeah, I was, uh, with um, K on. I guess that one. I knew that was coming. Uh, I like Young Boy. I listen to Young Boy yeah. a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. How about the UK? I know you mentioned Central. Yeah. Any, uh, other? any other? Um, Fredo. Yeah. Um, listen to a bit of Clavish sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's UK. I like Pot of Paper. Oh, he's coming yeah, that yeah, real yeah, street yeah, rap. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's good. Mm, and in terms of like, obviously going back to Novakov, it's date night. <laughs> uh, date night. You're on date night with, with the missus. Let me say, uh, yeah? yeah. What what's the outfit of choice? What I'm going with the missus. Okay, now let's say let's say for example, let's put let's put a spin on this. Uh, First date, you're dressing to impress. To impress. What are you rocking? Probably wear some, like. My, uh, Chanel, my Chanel trainers, Thanks. all my Dior trainers. Like, I don't really wear designer jeans, so maybe normal jeans. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Zara thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would do, man. For real, Zara thing. And if I want to show out, mm. I wear um, I wear a designer t shirt. But I, I like usually like plain stuff like from mm. Reese and stuff. Oh, like if yeah, I want to show Reese out, I'll like, go wear like Saint Laurent t shirt or something okay. like that. Man, big, and big. then um wear wear my um go your bag. And if I really want to show out I have to wear my watch but the watch on What so what about the jeans? Is it flares or is it nah, skinny fit? With the flares, I'm with the flares. I'm gonna, I might go with the flares. I've jumped my, on it, you my, know. He jumped on yeah, it. My friend's it's always proper. telling me he's um he um has a brand. This is his brand. No, um, solid, solid yeah, brand. He's always telling me to get on this flare, flare jeans. Even some, um, some of my other friends. So I might, I might give it a try. You know. But why mm-hmm. haven't you jumped in it? Is it just difficult to get your head round? No, nah, it's just not my. I, don't, I just didn't think it was my style. Like you know, everyone's style. Oh, is see, different. you know. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I might try. I might try try some flares and you know post a few pics on the ground. That's the new flare. Yeah. That's yeah. the new. That's the new drip. J fours and the flares. Flares. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the swallow. Put it over the ducks. Yeah. Nah, that makes sense. No, nah, as we said, bro. Like love for popping down today, nah, man. That's cool, man. Like, obviously, it was good to hear about your journey, yeah. and I think like youngsters listening in, yeah. even parents and stuff, mm. will learn a lot because yeah. you're still on your journey, and we're exactly. going to be tracking it. Yeah. You know, you've got 10, 15 years yeah. ahead of you, and obviously, there's going to be ups, ups and downs. That's yeah. it. But it's about as you said, getting back from it, mm. as you've done with the injuries and yeah. stuff. So, from us, love, bro. Uh, thanks for having me, guys, man. No, definitely, man. It's been an absolute pleasure, bro. And I'm not going to lie, yeah, we've interviewed so many footballers, bro. And mm. I have to say, bro, you're one of the most humble people that we, we've met on this platform, mm. bro. So, you, big up to you. That's big up right. to your family. Yeah. Big up to your sister. And we're going to be following your journey, bro. Thank you, bro. I'll be following you, too. No, I love. love. So, we've got a closing tradition on this podcast mm. where we ask the guests that's received TBG treatment 
yeah. and obviously that's why I was giving you the nice words because obviously <laughs> I, I want you to recommend the guests for us and we're going to put pressure on you yeah. so if you had to recommend the guests in football to come onto this platform who would it be? Academy uh, anyone hasn't been that on. you know who hasn't been on they're just like this is the trick like uh, silence um, <laughs> I don't know I'll give you an answer um I think you should interview Miguel Aziz. Okay. I have an interesting story to tell you guys. Mm. And you're going to help with that one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, 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 we'll try, I'll try, I'll try my best. No, love. Did any final thoughts? Bro, nah, I appreciate that. Obviously, Miguel Aziz, that's, yeah. I was that's laughing because that's, that's one guy. that's, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Uncle yeah. Femi, big up Uncle oh, Femi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so then we're going to leave it there. As I said earlier, Nathan, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Over and out until next time. Peace.